Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about all the cursed forest changes as it is definitely the most altered existing zone rivaling Dunley and I wanted to cover everything so you can know what to expect in these spooky woods. We'll be covering a multitude of information about the zone including an overview, when to enter, how to handle the new curse, new and old bosses and mobs, changed points of interest and resources, and general tips for progressing. I do want to preface that this is based off the current beta test, however the devs have been doing an amazing job of updating and fine tuning various aspects, so keep that in mind in case something is a little outdated. That being said, let's hop right into it. As many of you know from playing before, the Cursed Forest is not a new zone. However, it was changed a very good bit so I thought it was important to cover. You will still face against ghastly ghouls, spiders, lurkers, and more. You'll still get familiar resources from the zone like silkworms, spectral dust, and various types of hide. However, with some new bosses and changes bringing new items, and we'll be covering those in the corresponding bosses. First things first, when do you enter the cursed forest now? This zone still begins towards the back half of Act 2 after Dudley Farmlands and sorta after Gloomrot South. In terms of bosses, it'll be after you've beaten Razel and Octavian typically, or the Gloomrot South bosses. Gloomrot South and Curse Force go hand in hand in terms of progression. You'll be going to both zones when you're around level 60 to 65. Typically Gloomrot South first and then more into the Curse Forest after. Now, the Curse of the Cursed Forest, what is it? The Curse is this mist that exists in the Cursed Forest. As you stay in the Cursed Forest, you will gain a debuff that stacks up to 100. As it increases, both your vision around your character and your map will begin to blur and become limited. At 100, you'll barely be able to see in front of you, and your minimap and map will be completely shrouded, leaving you lost if you are not careful. There are two ways to get rid of this curse. The first were by finding trapped wisps around the map. These lights you can go up to and free the wisp and when it is freed, your debuff will decrease rapidly. Take note though is after you do this, this is only temporarily and the curse will return quickly after. So this is a good way if you find these to unlock it and be able to figure out where you are in the curse forest, but don't be expecting to navigate too much off of this. A good tip I have for players is that you can set down pins at key points around the map if you need help before you lose your vision. This way you can know where the entrance to the Cursed Forest is and be able to follow that pin as a general compass to get back. The other way to deal with the curse is to get the cloak that you will get from Aviblood as a craft. The big note about this curse is wearing it makes you immune to the curse and you can make it without a crafting station. So when you kill the V-Blood, you can, if you have the resources, immediately make it in your inventory and wear it so you can navigate the Cursed Forest. Speaking of bosses, there are now six V-Blood bosses in the Cursed Forest, maybe seven if you count Wilfred the Werewolf Chief, who is not quite in the Cursed Forest, but on the border. Of these bosses, two are new bosses. One of these new bosses now marks the final boss of Act 2 instead of Octavian. The old bosses you may remember are Ungora the Spider Queen, the Duke of Babylon, Falroth the Soul Taker, and Styx the Sunderer. Ungora still gives the spider ultimate and the crafting recipes for silk and spiderlings. The Duke of Babylon still unlocks frog form and now gives crafting recipes for medium corn pouches and silver coins. Falra unlocks Mist Trance spell and the recipe for Spectral Dust. And his sticks still unlocks Bat form. He now also gives the spell Soul Burn, which is new, and the crafting recipe for the Onyx tier, which is also new and you'll need to get to be able to craft Golden Legendary weapons. Now, the two new bosses of the Cursed Forest. The first is the Old Wanderer, a boss that is similar to Beatrice in that he runs away from you at all times. However, with the Curse of the Cursed Forest, this can become extremely hard to follow, and he is the boss that will give you the cloak to become immune to the curse, so you will have to fight him the first time without that cloak. Not only that, but the mobs of the Cursed Forest that he runs by can be fatal at lower levels, and he will throw down traps for you to walk into. 
But like we said, if you do beat them, you get the crafting recipe for the Shroud of the Forest, which is a cape that when equipped you are immune to the curse of the Cursed Forest. The last of the new bosses is Cyril the Cursed Smith. Cyril is the final boss of Act 2 and a tough opponent. He is guarded by countless undead specters in the Cursed Village, and it's a small raid to even reach him. When you do, however, be prepared for a tough fight, as he will summon many weapons to help aid him and hopefully take you down. Defeating him unlocks the new spell Wraith Spear and the crafting recipes for the Anvil and Dark Silver. Now for the points of interest and resources that you can gain in the Cursed Forest, we'll kind of go over everything. The stole the basics from before, for those who remember, you still have your ghost crystals, your silkworm, etc. All those res resources are still here. There's no major change resource off of that, but there are crafting recipes with those items that are now different. So do keep that in mind when you get these items and bring them back. The crafting recipes to refine them are now different and what they are used for are now different. With that in mind, let's look at the Cursed Forest now. As you can see, some things have been changed around. This is the spider cave over here. It used to be up here, so there has been some movement. Um, to start off though, there are now two way gates into the Cursed Forest. You have this one you had before, and then over here, there used to be a cave exit over here, but now there is a way gate. So you can teleport to the west side or to the east side of the Cursed Forest. Within it, you now have the spider cave over here. This is the exact same as it was before. It's just been turned and moved to be on this side. But you still will go through, fight spiders on the outside, make your way through the cave, and then fight the spider boss. The Swamp of Greed is where the Duke, the frog boss, is. It's a little bit more north as this area has kind of been changed a bit. But he is up here now as well as there's a mosquito nest here. Mosquito nest here. A lurker dwelling here now. You still have your witch huts down in this area, and then another lurker dwelling here. So for the most part, these small camps are all kind of the same with some alterations with the mosquito nest. But you do have these now for how it is set up. Moving over here, there was originally a town that was right here at the entrance of the Cursed Forest. Uh, that has been moved instead now. You just have the roads here, one that leads over to Gloomrot South. So there's not only one entrance into Cursed Forest, but they're still in the same area. And then this uh, town over here has been moved up here. It's now called the Cursed Village. Uh, this is where you will fight Cyril, the final boss. He's kind of back here. You still have the Lair of the Behemoth, where the Behemoth lies with this shard for those who wish to fight him. And then up here is the Nest of the Cursed Weeper, where Matka fights. So she used to be on this side of the Cursed Forest. So her and the Spider Cave have kind of flipped a bit with this village as well. But the Nest of the Cursed Forest, or the Nest of the Cursed Weaver, is here now. The ancient village is still here. There's still where you fight uh, Falrot. It's the same layout. And then there's still a lurker dwelling back here. And then, of course, Styx still roams the same path that he did before. Lastly, we do have four castle heart spots. We have one here, a small one here, one here, which is maybe about the same size, actually. The one here in the middle, and then the one here up top. Those are the four spots you can now build in the Cursed Forest. Obviously, with the Castle Heart changes, there's a little bit less flexibility in building in here, and so you will have to keep that in mind uh, if you're looking to have a home in the Cursed Forest. Lastly, with the mobs, for the most part, the mobs are the same in the Cursed Forest. You still have different types of mosquitoes and frogs. You still have the lurkers who will roam around invisible until you get close. You still have some undead wolves and bears. However, with the ghouls, or the ghosts, I should say, there are a few different uh, alternatives now. It's not just banshees and kind of just kind of general ghosts or some that uh, will use weapon abilities that will kind of track you down, go invisible, try to incapitate you. This should be anything different from previous mobs you fought, but they are now also ghosts, so do be aware of that. Overall, the changes to the Cursed Forest, I think, are incredibly beneficial. I think it really makes the Cursed Forest stand out as its own zone and not just a spooky version of the old zones. I think the Curse implementation is really nice. We had a lot of cool uh, encounters in terms of progressing there in both PvP and PvE. 
and I think overall this has made it a much more seamless and interesting zone instead of a sort of side zone that you go through real fast and forget about later on so you can get to silver light quicker. I'm overall a fan of these changes I hope you are too and I hope this guide helps you navigate the spookiness of the cursed forest. If you guys like this content be sure to like and subscribe and follow me at twitch.tv slash redloft where I am streaming V Rising all the time and yeah thanks for watching peace out.